friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are at my mom's house this morning. Yesterday, we prepped over 15 recipes in order for a, a going away party today. Good morning, friends. So happy to see you this morning. And we need to pull everything together. So in this crock pot, we have meatballs that we went ahead from scratch and made yesterday. We also made some homemade barbecue sauce. And we're gonna go ahead and pour that right over the meatballs. The meatballs are cold, but I took the time to go ahead and just heat up the barbecue sauce so that this crock pot would warm up a little bit quicker. I'm gonna put it on high and we'll put the lid on and the first appetizer for this party is set and ready to go. We have the entire table set where we're putting all the appetizers. My mom has her famous notes on each platter so we know exactly what is going on what. My mom just pulled the, did you do the hummus or veggie plate? Um, I just pulled the veggie plate and the veggies are on the counter ready to go. The fruit is on the counter ready to cut. That plate is full. Oh, you already got that? Okay. So she's going to start on the veggie plate. I'm going to start on the fruit plate. And we have to make two hummuses today, an allergen friendly one and a pickle plate. And then everything else we have already cooked or it just needs to go in the oven. So we'll just hang out together pull this party together and the drinks when we get all this mess here cleaned up all this prep done back out in the garage to cool we'll set up the drinks at this end of the table and then tomorrow we'll be back because we're yesterday we prepped for two parties today's the going away party all appetizers hors d'oeuvres and little desserts so then tomorrow we'll be back and we'll pull that dinner together but for right now we're going to start on veggies fruit and hummus i'm going to do the allergen friendly one first so that I don't have to clean the bowl in between because they're essentially the same ingredients but the allergen friendly one does not have tahini or any citrus in it. I'm going to prep the fruit so we can make a fruit plate and I just wash everything right in the container because there's holes in it and just makes things a lot easier. I'm going to cut up a pineapple. Have any of you guys tried that pineapple thing that's been all over the internet where you it slices the pineapple in rounds and cores it at the same time. I've thought about getting one of those. I don't cut a ton of pineapple, but let me know what your thoughts are on that because it seems pretty fascinating. I just cut it in quarters, cut the core out, and then we'll put this on the plate. I was going to try to make this look all beautiful and organized, but that didn't go very well. So then I just kind of mixed them all together and that's how I made the fruit plate. This is the non-allergen friendly hummus. It consists of the chickpeas, some tahini, the spices, which are pepper, onion powder, garlic, paprika, salt, and cumin, and I measured those earlier. And I'm just gonna blend it. And, oh, this is the lemon juice and the olive oil. never bought tahini before I didn't realize it's quite thick at the bottom it's going to take me a little bit to stir it back into the proper consistency sure smells good though one trick I found that I really like when I make homemade hummus is to save some of the liquid from the garbanzo beans when you pour it out and that has a name but I can't remember what the name of that is at this point but you can use that to thin out and make your hummus really really creamy so my mom likes to use the stick blender because when she does things like hummus, it's easy to get out. Instead of using a Vitamix or blender, she feels like she can get more of the hummus out. I use a food processor, but my mom doesn't have a food processor. Well, I have a tiny one that attaches to the stick blender. This stick blender has lots of parts. It has a whisk that I use for whipping cream, so I don't have to get the whole big thing out. And it has a food processor, but it, the food processor, it doesn't work very well. Doesn't have enough power, I think. Okay, I'm gonna make the top fancy with some, uh, what would you call those, valleys? For the olive oil. And we'll decorate it with a little paprika. Beautiful. Isn't that pretty? So this is the regular one and this is the allergen friendly one. It has no lemon juice and no tahini in it. Here's the fruit plate. I'm gonna go put it out in the fridge until we're ready to set the table. A veggie plate is pretty standard staple in our house whenever we have a family dinner, regardless of if it's a big event or not, because my nieces and nephews all really like 
hummus and so it's just a good easy appetizer so while i get this put together my mom is going to work on the master schedule so that everything comes out of the oven at the same time nice and hot so what she does is she looks at all her recipes and she works backwards so the party today is supposed to start at one o'clock and it's an open house and we only have to put two things in the oven so it makes it pretty easy for this party but she does it the same regardless of if there's five or six things that need to go in the oven or two or three things. So we know the party is supposed to start at one o'clock. So she works backwards. So the bacon wrapped pineapple is gonna take 45 minutes and the peppers I think take about 30 minutes. We're gonna show you the master list here later, but for now what she does is she takes those oven times and she subtracts that from the time that the party's supposed to start so we know that it's going to come out at the same time and it'll be nice and hot and what she likes to do at that point is set a reminder on her phone so that she knows and doesn't have to try to think of every single thing when it needs to go in the oven there'll be a reminder at 12 20 that she needs to put in the bacon wrapped pineapple and one at about 12 35 that the peppers need to go in the oven so now that we have all that, we're gonna go ahead and get the pita ready for the hummus as well. We're gonna put the non-allergen friendly hummus in the middle of this pita pit plate and we are gonna get some pickles cut up. All the food prep is now done. All we have to do is bake a couple of the things we cooked yes or we prepared yesterday. My mom right now is setting up a beverage area. I'm gonna get clean on the counters. We're gonna turn the dishwasher on and then we have to sweep and then we get to go pick up some donuts, pick up some flowers, and we get to relax and hang out until it's time to put a couple things in the oven. My sister shows up in a little bit, and that's why we're going to go run and get the donuts. My nephew's birthday is tomorrow, or we're celebrating my nephew's birthday tomorrow, and one of the desserts we're having for him are some vegan and gluten-free donuts. And so we wanted to try, though, to get this kitchen really clean because we kind of tidied it but it hasn't been cleaned since we did all that cooking yesterday. So anytime I do one of these big cooking days, any of the veggie scraps, most of it gets brought back to my chickens. There was a little bit in the sink here today, which is not a big deal. I'm just gonna run those down the garbage disposal, but I wanted to get the sink a good scrubbing before. The flowers we're going to pick up are from our realtor every year. Our realtor gives us a hanging basket. And if you follow along my garden journey, we're growing a lot of stuff in containers this year and all of the ginger that I planted this year which by the way is about six or seven inches tall which I'm pretty excited that this experiment seems to be working out well are all from recycled hanging basket pots that I've gotten over the years from our realtor so I decide to go ahead and sweep but my dad quickly rescues me from this job he's pretty great about swooping in and helping us do the final clean here so he sweeps the whole house and then he's got this kind of mop polisher type thing and he goes around the whole house and he does that and then he discovered my mom's new vacuum and then he wanted to vacuum as well so he did a fantastic job cleaning up this house for us so my mom made up her countdown we want the party to be ready at one o'clock for people and so she put what time things need to come out of the oven we did all of these things already and the bacon wrapped pineapple is in the oven and we have right now it is 12 38 so we're a little behind but we need to get the peppers in the oven they are right here so we have the pineapple do you want me to put these on the bottom shelf mom uh yes okay After my dad got the house completely clean for us, we just sat down and relaxed, and then my sister and her kids and my brother-in-law got here. So we went and hung out, we went and ran some errands, got some coffee, picked up donuts, some gluten-free vegan donuts for my nephews that have some allergies. And now it's time just to start getting everything out. We're almost ready to pull this entire party together. And it's coming together beautifully. We have the hummus around the pita. We just need to take the saran wrap off the things. We might wait for another couple minutes to do that. We have a tray for the peppers. We have a tray for the bacon wrapped pineapples. And this is gonna be for the meatballs. The meatballs are bubbling away. I put it on keep warm. This is the sauce for the bacon wrapped pineapples. The bacon wrapped pineapples are on top. They take a good 40 minutes to cook because that bacon's gonna take time to 
render out the fat, and then there is some bacon wrapped dates. Mom, we have one more thing of peppers. Did you grab those? They're right there. I've never oh. cooked them all at once. Okay, that makes sense. So we can have some fresh peppers. Yeah. And what else do we need to do? The drinks? Yes, and I didn't want to clang the ice while you're <laughs> videoing. <laughs> Let's get the drinks set up right now. We've got a punch. So the one my mom and dad are making right now is cranberry here. ginger, which you guys have seen before. So we're gonna have a couple different punches, and then we are gonna do a just raspberry lemonade in one and a fancy water. My mom's gonna put some what cucumbers? Cucumbers and rosemary. Oh, that'll be good. That's my favorite. Do you want me to go get the rosemary right now? Sure. Here's the scissors. You can go get some from the yard. Okay, I'll go get the rosemary. You want this in there? Yes, please. Go. These go in here? Yep. Yes. Is any water going there? Or is this the. This is going to be water. <laughs> no, the, the 7 Up acts as water. We have about 10 minutes before people are going to start arriving, so I'm going to go ahead and just start taking all the saran wrap off. You want half the ice in one of these? Uh, My sister made little tags. Or if something's allergen friendly, so the kids and the different people who are going to be here are going to know what they can have. These are salmon cucumber roll-ups with cream cheese. Here we have their pickles with cream cheese and ham. And then we have three different kind of cookies. These are Nutty Buddy cookies. They're peanut butter cookies with chocolate, Toll House cookies, and cranberry white chocolate pecan cookies. You want to put oh. the lid on? Yeah. Put it on? Right there, Can buddy. I put a little more ice? Sure. I'll put that ice. Okay. No, okay, so a few more, done. Good job. Way to go, buddy. The beverage area turned out really beautiful. Self-serve coffee and beverages. Meatballs are ready to go in the serving platter and they smell so good. I like these new ones here, they're smaller. And we'll oh, just do a nice. few so they're hot. We'll leave the rest in the oh, crock pot. Crock pot. We could probably put it on keep warm now. Yes, I think we can. Halfway through the baking process of the bacon wrapped dates and pineapple, they needed to be flipped so they could get really crispy on all the sides. These were really good. It comes with a sweet and sour sauce we're gonna put on it, but I also found a recipe where you just take the bacon wrapped pineapple and dip it in brown sugar and bake it that way, and I think that would be really good too. The dates have so much sugar content that they are getting done faster. So we're gonna take the dates off and then we'll continue to cook the pineapple. And the pineapple gets a glaze. But I don't think it's quite ready no, for the glaze No, it's not yet. ready for the glaze, but the pineapple gets a glaze in probably 10 minutes. Yeah. These are sausage and cream cheese stuffed peppers. We did both sweet peppers and jalapenos, so they're kind of like a meat packed, jalapeno popper, and they're one of our favorite appetizers. They're good served room temperature or hot. This was the last thing to come out of the oven, and now the party is set. People are starting to arrive. Everything's on the table. We are going to head to tomorrow where we're gonna finish up the barbecue for the four birthdays and Mother's Day that we're celebrating for May. I'm going to show you what we're doing to get this second party all prepped. This is for a birthday party. We have four birthday parties we're celebrating and there's gonna be about 20 people here. So I wanted to come out here and kind of give you a recap. We're gonna have some of the leftover fruits and veggies from yesterday's party. We are gonna do teriyaki chicken burgers on the grill. They're gonna be fantastic. We're gonna grill pineapple. I'm gonna head inside and make the salad dressing. It is a kind of like a vinaigrette Caesar dressing that is phenomenal and there's more. We have cakes and all the fun things, so come join us as we pull together another party. This is my mom's famous Caesar dressing recipe. We have this all the time for family dinner, and this salad, none of it gets left over. It all gets eaten. It's equal parts lemon juice, Parmesan cheese, and olive oil. It's like a vinaigrette Caesar dressing. Then we're gonna put quite a bit of garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And the key ingredient in this is Worcestershire sauce. This is what gives it its Caesar dressing flavor, even though it's not a creamy Caesar. Put the lid on. Oh, geez. <laughs> we didn't have the... <laughs> even oh. your photo top was yeah. covered with grease. That would have been bad. You made a chocolate. Nope. 
If you guys watched yesterday's vlog, we were here on Friday, today is Sunday, and we prepped a bunch of the food for today's party. These are some baked beans. My mom and I put all the things that we needed for those baked beans in the crock pot, let it soak overnight. They were dried beans. This morning she turned it on and now they'll be ready for the party. And over here we also prepped a rice salad that has a lemon vinaigrette on it. And all we have to do left for this, because we chopped all the vegetables, is we get to make the vinaigrette and chop the herbs. We didn't want to chop the herbs early because those would turn brown and get kind of gross. This is mint from, not my garden, it's mint from my patio. From the, the, this, like the stone patio. Yes, the mint, you know how it runs runners? Well, it ran runners this uh, winter and now it's coming up between the house and the patio. <laughs> so I cut that first and uh, when the weather breaks, I will spray it with the vinegar and uh, salt and dish soap mixture and kill it back. Yeah, she has a lot of mint out there. And then we're also gonna put some basil in there. My mom is prepping a fruit salad right now that we're gonna have. Some of these fruits were left over from the party yesterday. And do we have any left I'm gonna, over? I'm gonna tell you a trick about making a fruit salad. If you chop your apples first, and then you chop uh, whatever citrus you're gonna have, and you do a pretty good job of stirring it up, and I'll probably squeeze a little of the orange juice. That's a good idea. On the apple, then it won't turn brown. This is one of my favorite spring and summer side dishes. It's super delicious. It has chopped red peppers, the zest of three lemons, one onion chopped, and we're gonna put some cashews in it. We cooked up the basmati rice to, on Friday, and I cooked it in some broth, so it has so much flavor. We cooled it down, and we're gonna go ahead and dress it now. We don't wanna dress it too soon because then the rice could get soggy because we're gonna make a vinaigrette to go on top. I have these cashews that are chopped and salted and roasted. We're gonna put right in, and then I didn't show it, but I did put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in this. We're going to salt it and pepper it, and then we're gonna chop a ton of that mint from my mom's garden and a ton of basil. This recipe is very adaptable with, oh, it looks like I'm adding a little bit of garlic powder too. With what herbs you wanna add, you can add cilantro, parsley, basically whatever fresh herbs you have and are your favorite, just add a bunch of them. You want about the equivalent of about two thirds of a cup of fresh herbs in this recipe. So you could use even green onions if you want. Now, one trick with this salad is my mom and dad don't like the flavor of raw onions too well. So if you take your raw onions and you rinse them under cold water, you can get some of that really raw onion flavor out so you can still have the texture and flavor but without the harshness of a raw onion. So there is that beautiful salad. We're gonna give it a little toss and we have a side dish done. My mom is finishing up the fruit salad. A lot of this fruit was left over from yesterday like we mentioned, but we also had a cantaloupe and a mini watermelon that she wanted to add because they needed to be eaten up. And one of her other tricks for when it comes to fruit salad is if you have anything little like raspberries or blueberries, just put those on the top so they don't fall to the bottom of your salad bowl. Now that we are done with that, we are going to prep the condiments and the sides for the burgers. So we're having teriyaki burgers and regular burgers. I grabbed the two platters my mom had for which condiments she wanted on which platter, and we got those chopped up. We have some really big, beautiful tomatoes. This is getting me very excited for garden season. I don't know about you, but in my area at least, it's been the wettest spring in about 80 years, and I am ready for some sunshine, some fresh, warm tomatoes off the vine, and I just can't wait for that. My mom had a sweet onion I chopped up so people can put that on their burger. And then my sister, all my family members are here at this point. So I roped my sister into helping get the cheese out. We had three different types of cheese. There was cheddar, Swiss, and pepper jack for people so they could choose whatever type they wanted. I cut up some romaine and then I cut up a ton of pickles. My family are huge pickle eaters. We will eat these pickles just for snacking, and if people wanna put them on their burgers, they can do that as well. So we just got done taking a ton of family photos. All my siblings are here with all their kiddos, and we did big group families with all the siblings, all the grandkids, my parents and everything. And then now, we're all very hungry. So my mom has for the main course today for dinner, we have some hamburger patties that my mom got from Costco. And then in here, she marinated some chicken in some 
teriyaki sauce and she's gonna grill that up along with some pineapples. And we're gonna have just burgers and teriyaki chicken burgers, which is gonna be absolutely fantastic. We've already prepped all of the side dishes and the condiments that are gonna go on this. The burgers are my son-in-law's favorite uh, meal and the chicken, teriyaki chicken grilled pineapple on an onion bun is my daughter's favorite so meal. So um, because it's a four person birthday party, I'm not making four separate <laughs> meals, although we do have three separate desserts. Yes, we do. <laughs> we still have to finish the Striped Delight. It's a dessert I've talked to you guys about a while ago and I never made it. So now if you wanna watch the first part of it, it's in the last video from yesterday, but we're gonna finish it and complete it today. And all these recipes will be linked down in the description box if you want any of them. Hey, this isn't Redmond Real Salt. I'm waiting for my Redmond Real Salt. Becky's going to put the link there, but let me tell you, I ordered it and I didn't realize that there's a minimum and then you don't have to pay, pay shipping. And I was just under the minimum, $30. Spent $30, you don't, don't have to pay for shipping. So my nephew is going to help. Can I help? Yeah, you want to help? Okay. We're going to start by putting this here. And I will have you turn the burgers and angle the burgers, okay? So let me put this on first. Now the reason I'm doing it the way I'm doing it is because I've had this grill for a long time. And I know that the side where the chicken is, is the coolest side. Uh, in all circumstances, no matter what the dials say, this is the cooler side. And cooler is better for chicken, in my opinion especially when it's covered with sugar because this is a teriyaki that keeps it from uh, burning. Sometimes I even have a squirt bottle. Why is it so hot? Because the burger is down. Perfect. One of the best parts about these burgers are the grilled pineapple. And you can put the pineapple on either a burger and kind of make like a teriyaki burger or on the chicken. We had two fatalities, I'm sorry to say. Oh, no. These pineapples, when I flipped them, they caught the edge and they went right down. Oh, no. I should have used those grill mats oh, yeah. that I told you about the other day. I didn't. They would have prevented casualties and I would still have gotten the nice marks. So the birthday girl gets priority on the pineapple because I'm too short and I don't have another can. <laughs> Mom. Okay, I'm almost Mom. Done pulling it off. Would we the dinner is getting pulled together. We serve this vinaigrette Caesar dressing over romaine with some Parmesan cheese and croutons. And my mom made some bacon this time. And this bowl wasn't quite big enough. So we pulled out a bigger bowl and that is dinner. We have all the traditional condiments, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, all the things, our fruit salad, our rice salad, and our baked beans. Everything turned out so fabulous. This was a wonderful meal. After dinner, it was time to clean up. Josh and my dad are typically the ones that do the cleanup around here and we need to make dessert or finish making dessert, I should say. So we're gonna whip some whipped cream. We have a pint of whipped cream, about a quarter cup or so of powdered sugar and vanilla. And we're gonna top our Stripe Delight with this. But first my niece needed, <laughs> she needed a quality, quality control there. So this is the Stripe Delight dessert. It's a pudding dessert. It's a family favorite. It's got graham cracker crust, homemade pudding, cream cheese layer with whipped cream, and then it's topped with whipped cream on the top. And it's absolutely delicious. I took a sneak there. You can see, oh, there was another one. And then we have four birthdays and Mother's Day we're celebrating today. So we put the candles on and light the candles. Thanks friends for hanging out with us today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch more cooking videos with me and my mom, I'll put some up so you can go enjoy those between now and my next upload. If you're new, please consider subscribing and I can't wait to see you next time. Oh, I well, it's funny. Extra large container set. and take less space in your cabinet.